It's the tail end of winter and my body tub has been sitting in the rain for about six weeks. I've managed to do a little bit here and there. It just needs its final coat of primer and a blocking back and then the outside of it is ready to paint. I've done a couple of uh, little scrapes of body filler over some scratches sanded them back and now I'm going to paint etch primer over them just to make sure that there is some kind of primer over these patches to give the top coat something to stick to. As I said in one of the earlier videos where I was painting the roof this thing has been painted multiple times by farmers. Um, inside the petrol filler cap recess it hadn't been rubbed down the paint was flaking everywhere so I'm gonna spend an hour with various grades of sandpaper fixing this there's a little bit of corrosion yes aluminium does corrode it doesn't rust but it does corrode especially where it's touching a dissimilar metal so what what I've done is made this aluminium patch I'll nibble that out and I'm going to use my old favourite JB Weld to attach that. I'll sand it up with some 60 grit sandpaper. The JB Weld is an epoxy paste that has a black part and a white part. You mix the two together till it becomes a uniform grey colour and then splodge it across anything that you want to repair or glue. Um, it's great for filling in cracks. It can be drilled, sanded, painted. It's very strong. But it takes quite a while to dry. It takes a good 24 hours to go off in this kind of weather. So you'll know, mix it up, pl put plenty on, and that will splodge up through the um, corrosion holes and then as it sets I can pat it down and form a pad that I can send off when it's hard tomorrow. So I'll just put it in place and I'm going to hold it with a couple of clothes pegs till it's dry and tomorrow I can send that off finish sending up this hole and get some primer on it. While that hardens off, I'll start looking at this last little bit of repair on the left hand side. There was just a few scratches that hadn't quite filled in with the top coat with the previous coat of primer. So I'm going to put a guide coat over this now. Just cheap, nasty paint of a contrasting colour, and I'll wisp a light colour over the surface like that. Leave it to dry and when I come back in a few hours after it's dry and I start sanding the blue paint will be left in the low spots. It's still cold in the morning until about 10 a.m. but at least it's dry now. We've had about two and a half months of intermittent rain every day. I've busied myself with other jobs. I've got a lot of people during the winter who want me to make uh, wood stoves for them and I've also done a few other inside jobs. But now it's back into it. It's still cold until about 10 a.m. but at least I can get the rubbing down done and the paint is drying and hardening off. I'm hoping that I'm going to get some warmth into the day after about 10 a.m. and by 3 p.m. I'm hoping to have this thing painted. This is the sanding disc for a DA sander. DA stands for double action. It oscillates and rotates randomly, eliminating marks. The sanding discs can either have a Velcro backing or they can be self-adhesive like these older style ones that I use. 
The DA is great for feathering out edges and also good for blocking back large areas to get a nice flat finish. Well, I was wrong. Today's not a painting day. It's just hit 12 o'clock lunchtime and the temperature hasn't got over 10 degrees Celsius. So it's not gonna happen. What I've been doing instead is blocking back where I've guide coated here. You can see how I've worked my way along here and I'm working into this area. And the whole idea is to send it until the blue disappears, but no more than that. We don't want to cut through the primer and into bare metal again, um, but we do want to hit the low spots. The blue guide coat will stay in the low portions as I sand. So I just sand until the blue disappears with a block, and that ensures that the panel is perfectly smooth. Good car paint's expensive, but I guess this is the reason you pay big dollars for a good paint job. preparation time that goes into it. So I spent the rest of the day blocking it back, tidying up around rivet heads and preparing some of the small parts to paint. When I'm painting I always paint the small bits first, get them out of the way, it makes sure that the gun is spraying correctly. There's a lot of adjustments on the gun. You can adjust the amount of product coming out, you can adjust the air pressure, and you can adjust the air volume. So you can see me fiddling with the gun here. Just as I'm spraying small parts, it gives me chance to dial the gun in and get it going how I like. While I'm painting something, I will also play with the gun as I need to blow the paint either further and get it into cracks or fan it out wide to get a nice finish on a big panel. Once I've got these small parts painted, I'll pop over to the tub behind me and I'll start painting the most awkward parts first. Inside these corners, it's, it's a return. You've got to hold the gun virtually upside down to get paint into these areas. If I do it now, it means that I'm not going to be risking rubbing my knuckles or the gun or the hose on freshly painted surfaces. A lot of people jump in and start painting an easy bit first and then find that they've snookered themselves and they can't get into corners like this. So I do these areas first. The green that you can see is uh, where I've just broken through the primer while I've been sanding. So I've just sprayed a wisp of etch primer over there to make sure that the paint will stick. And I'll put two coats into these areas and then I'll start on the flat panels and as I do the second coat on the flat panels, that will mean that I'm adding a third coat into these areas. And by the time I put the third coat onto the flat panel, I've got four coats in all of the awkward areas. Also, it's where seat belt buckles are going to be flicking around and risk chipping paint. So having extra paint on there just ensures that it's going to look better for longer.
The wheel arches deserve a bit of a love as well. You've got all the stone chips and mud and carry on going along the bottoms here. So I always make sure to give plenty of paint under there. Underneath this top rail, you've got a combination of needing to spray up to get paint up underneath the rail, and also you've got to get in left, right, left, right, left, right, behind each of these little rope down tie tags for the soft top. So um, getting that out of the way first before you start blowing in the sides is a really good way of ensuring that you don't get caught out and find little bare patches behind those tags after you've painted the entire thing. I've had the gun turned right down to give me about a two inch fan. Now that I've done all of these small bits, I'll just adjust it as I did there to give me a wider fan and I can start blowing in the sides. A good gun has got a, a an adjustment of between maybe a one inch fan and a six or seven inch fan. Once that's done, I can start painting the large flat areas and make it look like a finished job. But as luck would have it, it's about now that my memory card was full up. And as I started to paint the sides, I was painting it, but not recording any video. <clears throat> so in lieu of that, I've got a bonus treat for you. When I'm painting chassis, and underneath parts, I use this paint. It's really, really old. It's made in New Zealand by a company called Biosynth. Very small business, the guy works from his garage at home. He calls this paint Gilso Flex, but it's a Gilsonite based paint. And Gilsonite was the paint that Henry T. Ford used on the Model T chassis. It's incredibly dur durable, it's high build, there's a lot of good things going for this paint and one of those things is its price, it's only $40 for 4 litres. I do apologise for not being able to show you the finished painted tub. Another video, two days time, will show me fitting the tub all nicely painted to the rest of the chassis. See you then!